Hey, in this video, I want to show you a really useful TypeScript trick. I discovered it like only a week ago in an open source repository and it's so good. It's so useful and so simple. You just feel kind of silly not knowing it. Let's take a look at an example. So here's the use case, right? We have a parent component and the only thing we're doing is returning a child component from it. And then inside of the child component, we want to receive conditional TypeScript properties. You remember that old meme from 2010 where it says like, never ask a man his salary, a woman his weight and whatever. That's precisely what we're gonna do right now. We want a type, props. This is gonna be a really good example. And in these props, we always want to receive the name of the person as well as their gender. Honestly, if we were going off my channel demographics, we could just leave it at this. I decided to include female as well. If you identify as anything else, please don't take this as offensive. I just wanna make a simple example. Then we want the salary, but only if you are a male and we want the weight only if you are a female. Now, defining the TypeScript properties like this is a really good practice. However, it doesn't quite cut what we want to do. Let us try destructuring those components in the child. For example, we can get the name and mark this as the properties we have just defined. So we will get type safety. Then we can also destructure the gender, the salary right here and the weight and we can save that child component. Now what we can see in the parent is we're getting an error because we're not passing any of those properties we have just defined. For example, the gender can be male or female. Right here, the name can be something like John. And now we also want to pass the salary because this person is a male. However, nothing stops us from A, not passing it, or B, just passing the weight as, you know, something like 50, whatever. That is not what we want. When a gender is male, we want to pass the salary as a mandatory property and the weight should not be able to be passed. How the hell do we do that conditionally in TypeScript? You see, here's the problem. The weight and the salary both are optional properties right now. You can tell that by the question mark right here. So you, you don't have to pass them at all and you could pass them if you wanted to, but there's, they're not logically linked at all to the gender right here. How do we do that? Well, first off, let's remove them and let's also remove the gender. Okay, so let's format this and let's start with the property we always want passed and that is the name property. Whether it's a male, it's a female or anything else, we want the name property to always be present. And then in TypeScript, to combine this object with another type, we use something called the AND operator, and we can just insert an empty object for now. Right now, that doesn't do anything. For example, if we try destructuring anything, we would just get the name property. However, what this allows us to do, this AND operator, we can wrap this in parentheses, and in here we can nest another TypeScript operator, and that is the OR property. So for example, we could say OR, another empty object. Again, right now this would not do anything because these are both empty objects. But what we are saying here is that the type is always a name and it is an empty object or another empty object. And in here we can conditionally or logically define whatever we want. For example, we could say the gender in here is going to be male. And when the gender is male, this object right here will be passed. So for example, we expect the salary as a number. Interesting. And then in the other case, we want the gender to be female. And we also want the weight to be passed as the number in that case. So we have co just conditionally, and I think it looked better this way, we always have the name property and one of these, either this or this object as the properties. And what this allows us to do now from the parent component where we render the child is pass the name, for example. Let's say Jane is the name. Then we can pass the gender and we get beautiful type safety IntelliSense. For example, let's pass this as female and we will get an error. Property weight is missing in type name string gender female but required in type gender female weight number. Awesome, so we can see just because we have passed the gender as a female, we only get access to the weight property that we need to pass now. How awesome is that? And if we try to pass something like the salary as we did in the beginning of the video with 50, we can't because that is not a valid type for this. However, if we change the gender to male, it would be because that is in our conditional type for the male gender in our child component right here. This is what we are expecting if the gender is a male. Now, if you wanted to actually 
actually use this. In production, I suggest you do it this way. I just did small refactoring where we have the male props defined separately right here with the gender and the salary and also the female props defined right here. It's nothing else than the inline definition we had earlier, um, but it just looks a bit or a lot cleaner wherever you define the actual properties because you have less inline typings. And then really important, the question of how do we get access to these values right here because we cannot destructure them. We can destructure the gender, but how do we get access to the salary or the weight? Can we just type them in? No, because they are conditional. That won't work. TypeScript might think, oh, these don't exist. What the hell do we do? And the answer is we do something called type guards. Instead of destructuring, let's get the props as is and let's do a type guard. That is we have an if statement and if the props.gender and now we get beautiful IntelliSense on that is either male or female. Well, if the props.gender is male, then TypeScript will automatically infer which properties we have access to. For example, we could console log the props dot and now we have a salary. Awesome. And else if the props.gender is triple equal to, well, female, we already have the male case, so only this one is left. In that case, we could console log the props.weight. Beautiful. Now, in a real app, you'd rarely use people and genders and salaries and weights. So what could a real world use case look like? Well, let's take a look at one very interesting one, and that is right here. Let's define a type API response, and that takes a generic. If you don't know what that is, don't worry, don't panic. We're going to take a look at that here in a second, and that is going to be equal to an empty object. So let's put a status in here, whether the API request is successful or not. Then the data of um, the generic type, we're going to get to that here in a second, and a timestamp, which we always want to be there. We could also define this in both objects. Let's take a look at the second option, and that is going to be an error status with the message of a string that we always need to pass when there's an error and also the timestamp property. Remember, in the previous example, this timestamp appearing in both, we could also define that, which is a bit cleaner in the first object, this one right here, which is always going to be present. But I just want to show you, you can also do this in both separately if you want to. And then let's take a look at a possible response that could come from the API. Whatever your API might be, this is the response of type API response. And this is a generic kind of like a function for TypeScript that we can now pass a type as if we were invoking a function, for example, the number. And now we get beautiful type safety on the response. Type empty object is not assignable to type API response number because we are expecting some data here that we need to pass. For example, the status of success, then we want to pass the data, the actual API data response, and then a timestamp that we always need to pass. And let's take a look at the possible error response, the response to, and that is going to be as the same type API response as the generic number as if we were invoking a function, but just in the TypeScript syntax. So we're passing a number into here, meaning the type of the data is going to be number with a status of error. And now because we have a error status, we can see we need to pass a message. We cannot pass the data. That is really, really convenient. So we can insert the message right here that we are expecting. And in any case, you know the drill, we need a timestamp because that is present in both of the types. That's why we're still getting an error here. So if we pass the timestamp, TypeScript is actually happy and we get full type safety for conditional TypeScript types. Really, really nice. Hey, if you like this video, chances are you're going to like the video where I talk about my current tech stack. I really enjoy working with it and chances are you might too. So it's going to be here on the screen somewhere and I hope you enjoyed that video. I'm going to see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye bye.